it's good to talk to you. I miss talking to you on a, on a regular basis when you were working for the Jets, but you're still following the sport. You've got a new business going on, so you are as in touch with everything as just about anybody. So we figured we'd bring you in and try to figure out what this uh, Jet and Giant season is going to be like with this free agency. Yeah, and it's amazing, Don. Like, our, our sport really has become a, a year-round when you look at the calendar. You know, just a few weeks ago, we were at MetLife watching Seattle win, then the Combine, and here we are. You know, the Hot Stove League already starting, and it's uh, less than an hour away. Um, Bill Polian was on with us yesterday, and he said he had certain rules to free agency. Didn't seem like he really liked it. Didn't believe you can build a championship with it somewhere to be able to fill some holes. Some of the rules he said he had, I want to know if you believe in them. Um, Never give more to a player outside of your organization than having a player maybe a little less to stay within your organization. Uh, do you buy that rule? That if you can upgrade just a little bit, maybe it's better to stick with what you have that's already within your organization, already have played for you. You know, Don, I think that's a pretty good guideline. I, I say, generally speaking, there's that axiom that, you know, you build through the draft. That's retail. Uh, and when you, excuse me, that's wholesale. When you go out to the free agent market, you're paying retail prices. So that's certainly uh, part of the dynamic. And I think when you do sign players, it's, you are sending a certain message to your locker room. So in terms of character, work ethic, when you bring somebody in, I agree with Bill's point about mm-hmm. that, you're sending a message to your locker room. And you're never one free agent signing away from a championship. You buy that? I, I do. Uh, you know, you go back to last year, I think John Schneider and Pete Carroll in Seattle did a great job. They were patient. They waited for the market to come back, and they didn't sign one guy. They went out to got the Cliff Averills, the Michael Bents of the world, got really good value signings. And the, now you fast forward a year later, Michael Bennett gets an extension and a ring. So that turned out to be a win-win. So although free agency starts in less than an hour now, Don, mm-hmm. it goes on for a number of weeks. And, again, I think the good organizations are strategic and they're patient. So when you look at the New York Jets – who could have as much as $50 million under the cap to start the season. Their best moves will be in the draft. That Maybe the draft could really help their future more than any free agent signings they can make. Yeah, I think when you hear it, like the number of $50 million, for example, there's a lot of strategic play that has to go on. You know, again, going back to Bill's point, which, again, I agree with, mm-hmm. a lot of that money you want to allocate to, to people in-house. So, you know, when we extend a guy like Darrell Revis or DeBrickashaw Ferguson or Nick Mangold, you know, that's going to come off your salary cap, too. You want to allocate some money to... Uh, you know, veteran free agency. Now, you know, what's interesting, it's amazing what's going on with the tackle position because one of the things you always look at is how can we improve our team? And you look at the top of the draft, you know, guys like Robinson and Luan, uh, Matthew, they're going to go early. But look, in veteran free agency, Brandon Albert, Jarrett Valdir, they're going to go early as well. So it just shows you how the game's being played, that these tackles in both free agency, Don, and mm-hmm. in the draft are going to go quick. And the Jets have a lot of picks. They've got a lot of money at the cap, so certainly they're – Future looks pretty bright. Let's specifically stay with the Jets for right now. And all these rumors swirling about Darrell Rivas. He could be cut. He could be traded. Didn't work out in Tampa. If you're John Edzig in the Jets, are you interested in bringing Darrell Rivas back? How much do you think he has at the age of 28 coming off that catastrophic injury? Yeah, well, again, I think you have to look at draft and free agency and say, is Darrell the best player? That's something they have to evaluate. You know, typically a player off the second year, Don, is going to be better uh, coming off the ACL mm-hmm. injury. I don't think he played poorly last year. Darrell set such high standards that uh, what he did before the ACL was really high. I do think he'd get back to that level. So what the Jets want to do, obviously that's for them to say. What I would say is this, though. Darrell has attributes you can't see, and some of the best things he does is he doesn't allow you to have a bad practice. Mm-hmm. So whatever team's going to get him is going to get a great player and a great competitor. Now, you've been in this position where there could be animosity and bitterness because of the trade in the first place. As an executive, is that something you factor in? Would that be something you worried about in pursuit of him, thinking that maybe some damage to the relationship was done because of the deal? You know, Don, that's a really fair point. And we always talked about that in these jobs, the privilege of these jobs, we're in the ultimate people business. And what I mean by that is, you know, Darrell's a human being, and maybe there were some bad feelings about getting traded, but there's only one way to deal with it, and that's head on. Look the person in the eye and say, hey, we made this trade. We thought it was going to be good for you. Tampa Bay and us, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And sometimes players come back. And I've been in that room, you know, when we traded Keyshawn Johnson back in 2000. We got two first-round picks. Ironically, that was with Tampa as well. But, you know, typically you make a trade. You try to make Mm -hmm. it work for all sides. And, look, you're moving forward. And if Darrell feels like it's in his best interest to come back, those are worthwhile conversations to pursue. All right. They let Cromartie go. Um, Obviously, you didn't want to have that kind of money attached to him over $9 million. The cap hit was astronomical. How much interest will be in him, and is he somebody that maybe the Jets could get back in a discounted rate? 
Well, uh, again, I'm sure they're looking at you know the other players that are available or who they can mm-hmm. draft. But I, what I would say is, you know, he has length, athleticism, and he's uh, under 30 years old. Now he didn't play great last year, but to Crow's credit, he was the first one to tell you that. Assuming his hip's going to be okay, I think he's a really good matchup. You know, if you're an NFC North team, think about this, Don, and you got to go face Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall. There's not a better body type available than Crow Marty to go play those guys. So we're in a matchup league. That's something you would have to factor. Um, I'm sure the lines of communication between the Jets and Crows agents, I'm sure, will be open. But uh, his body type will allow him to play in the league for a long time. And people forget how young he was when he was drafted by San Diego. So he's only 29 years old. And I think, again, assuming his hip's okay, Don, he'll play for a long time.